Welcome back to OSM. In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to replace the front brakes and rotors, the rear brakes and rotors, as well as the front wheel bearings on a 2014 GMC Terrain. This is a visual inspection of the front brakes and the rotors are clearly quite rusted. You're not gonna be able to see it, but there is some pad left still on the brake pads. I'm going 40 right now, I'm gonna accelerate slightly. I'm, I haven't touched the brakes, but as I accelerate with speed, that noise gets louder. I'm gonna apply the brakes now. And a few things happen there. So for one, the steering wheel was shaking a little bit, which to me indicates that we have some warpage going on our brake rotors. In addition to that, the noise decreased with speed, but when I applied the pressure to the brakes when those brake pads clamped down on the rotor, it didn't inherently change the sound. So from this test drive and my visual inspection of the brakes, I believe that we have warped rotors and I believe we have at least one bad wheel bearing in the front left of the car. All right, so after that test drive, I can hypothesize two things. For one, we need new brakes all the way around the car. And I can tell that because of our visual inspection, the brake rotors, they are rusty, there's ridges, it looks like there's uneven pad wear. It's just time to do a complete brake job on this car. But more to that point, when I was doing my test drive, when I was going about 40 miles an hour and I pressed pretty firmly on the brake pedal, I don't know if you noticed, but that steering wheel started shaking. And to me, that indicates that these brake rotors are getting warped. Well, they already are warped. Now, those brake rotors should be a smooth, single plane. They shouldn't have any bumps or ridges, anything like that. But as those rotors get old, as they go through extreme temperature shocks and changes, as they thin out, what can happen, they can get a bit warped. Now think about it, when you hit down on that brake pedal and those pads apply pressure against that drum, if that drum is warped, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be pulsations in the brakes, which in turn will cause that steering wheel to shake or if it's just happening on one side of the car, it could cause the car to pull to one side, but could be a stuck caliper too, but that's getting into another topic, but that's my diagnosis with that. Now, in addition to that, you'll remember during our test drive, we heard that constant humming sound, which that was definitely coming from the front end. I suspect it was coming from the front left. Now, I ordered a set of wheel bearings because it was $100, and it just makes sense. If you're doing one side, you might as well do the other side because the other side's probably not far from failure. Now, what are you gonna need for this video? What are you gonna need to accomplish this task? Well, you're gonna need some basic tools. You're gonna need a jack, you're gonna need jack stands, you're gonna need your basic set of mechanic tools, but as I go on throughout this job, I'll call out what tools I'm using so you get a better idea of what you're gonna need to accomplish this job. First things first, chalk the wheels on the opposite side of the car that you're working on. Second step, we need to pop these covers. So what I like to do, I like to take a big flathead screwdriver, wrap it in a rag so we don't scratch or damage the rim finish, go in this little slot, get the screwdriver a little twist, go in for another bite, and that pops right off. Next thing you're gonna need to do, while the car is still on the ground, find yourself a 22 millimeter socket attached to a breaker bar or something of that sort. And what you're gonna wanna do is just crack all these lug nuts loose. Just crack it loose. Don't take them off, just crack them loose. And you wanna do this while it's on the ground, because if the car is off the ground, then you run the risk of the tire spinning, and we don't wanna do that. Next thing we need to do is jack up the front of the car. So where do you jack up the car? What you're gonna look for so you're gonna look for this rail right here. You see where it dips down? This is the area where it's appropriate to jack up the car. Now, what I'm gonna do is after I finish jacking up the car, I'm gonna take that blue jack stand and just put it right next to where the jack is positioned on that rail to ensure that if we have a jack failure, that jack stand will prevent the car, in theory, from coming down on you and crushing you. All right, we have the car jacked up. We have our secondary jack stand in place just in case that jack were to fail. What you wanna do now, grab one side of the wheel and the other side of the wheel and rock it back and forth. 
I don't know if you can hear that, but I hear a little bit of play. I feel a little bit of play and I hear it. Same thing up and down. Same thing, so I have a little bit of play horizontally as well as vertically. Now, if it was just horizontally, it might just be the tie rod end, but I actually had the light on the back side of the rim, and when we get in here, you'll see what I'm talking about. There's a tie rod end over here, but uh, I didn't notice any play in the tie rod end, but because we have play vertically and horizontally, that just confirms my suspicion that we have a bad wheel bearing here. So what we can do now, we can take our 22 millimeter socket, we can remove these logs the rest of the way. So this is the tie rod end that I was talking about. Now, again, if we just had side to side play, I'd be looking at this very closely to see if we had any play in there. And so what we need to do now, we need to come back to the other side and we need to start disassembling the brake caliper assembly. I know for a fact I'm not saving the rotors or the pads. Both of them are getting replaced so I can get a little bit aggressive and I can use a pry bar. So what I'm doing now, I have a approximately foot long pry bar and I'm actually gonna pry out the brake pad a little bit. I don't know if you can see but it's moving slightly. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, back the pressure off off that brake caliper. I'm trying to create separation and space, which I can see it's moving a good bit. Get in there, get another bite. And the advantage of doing this now is I'm not going to have to come back in later and use a brake compressing tool. And additionally, it's going to make it easier to remove this caliper off the drum. So another thing that I've done is I've actually gone back in the car and I've actually turned the wheel to the left. As you can see, everything's turned to the left. And in turn, that grants me more access into this work area. It's gonna be a lot easier to work on this if you have the wheel turned to the left versus straight or turned to the right. Now the first thing we need to do in order to remove the caliper assembly is we need to remove these two bolts. There's gonna be a bolt right here and a bolt right here. And this is going to be a 14 millimeter. I'm gonna throw that on my breaker bar, which this is probably a little bit overkill. Ready, tighty, lefty, loosey. So we're gonna go up with this. Broke loose. There's gonna be one down right here. Break that loose. These are the same size, so you don't have to worry about getting these two mixed up. Now that we have those two fasteners removed, we can carefully remove the caliper assembly. As you can see, brake pads have remained on the caliper bracket, but you want to be careful with this assembly. Notice that there's a brake hose attached to it. You do not want to let this hang by the brake hose. Now, most guys carry a hook. I used to have a hook. I'm not sure where it is right now, so we're going to have to improvise a little bit. I just have a clamp, so that's hanging up out of the way. Now I can go ahead and remove the brake pads, making sure that you have a good view of this, which I think you do. And these brake pads, nothing special. Came off. You can see we got some weird, got some weird wear marks on those uh, pads there. Take the other one off. It's a good thing they are coming off loose. Now pro tip, if this is an active service vehicle, if you cannot be without this vehicle for more than a day, if you have your new parts, compare your new parts to your old parts. Just make sure that they're an exact match, which these pads are an exact match, so we can go ahead and proceed with the procedure. So now we need to remove this caliper bracket off the rest of the way. What you're going to need is an 18 millimeter socket. I'm using half inch drive, again using my breaker bar. There's going to be a bolt right here and one right here. So same thing, we're going to lift up. It's a little bit tight, but it's coming. Lefty loosey. Got that one started. We'll do the same thing with the upper one. Which I'm a little bit concerned about damaging that brake line, so I'm going to get a little extension. Buy us a little bit more room. See, now we're not in contact with that brake line. And there is no difference between the two of these. 
All right, now we need to take this T30 Torx fastener off that holds the rotor in place now. There is a special tool to do this. I don't have it. What I don't recommend you doing is just going in there with the T30 in a socket and just trying to get it to loosen up because oftentimes these are stuck in there a little bit. So here's my redneck method. I take a ball peen hammer, give it a couple whacks directly on the rounded side of the hammer to the fastener. Then what I do, I take my T30, it's attached to my socket wrench. And then, I know this isn't great for the socket, but sometimes you, you gotta do what you gotta do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tap on this, which in turn will kinda make this kinda like a, a hammer, uh, an impact driver, if you will. So just some light taps and applying steady uh, torsional force on the fastener. As you can see, she loosened up and we got her. And that always seems to work quite well for me. I know not the best for the socket wrench, but it works. If you can see, but there's definitely some rust, a little bit of corrosion on the end of that guy. So now we got to get the brake rotor off. And for this, I recommend some hearing protection and eye protection. I want to make a quick correction, and this may save somebody a lot of time, which I forgot to do this. But when I was hitting the rotors to remove them, I was hitting all along the outside of the disc. The proper place to really hit is actually right here in between the studs. And reason being, if you turn this back around, you can see that's where the corrosion, that adhesion kind of takes place. So it's best to direct the energy of the hammer directly to those spots. And also when you go to hit here, make sure you take a lug nut and spin it on the lug. So in case you get, uh, in case your aim's off with the hammer, that way you won't damage a lug. But definitely try to hit here if it's stuck first and then proceed to more aggressive measures. All right, so the next thing we need to do is remove this axle nut. Now, I don't have the right socket size. I know this is metric, but I'm using one and seven sixteenths. And uh, I just checked it. It's, it's loose enough where I can get it, but I really should start carrying the right size. I really gotta get a metric set of these. One axle nut. All right, now that we've removed the axle nut, we've tapped the uh, CV shaft inward. We've freed it up from the hub assembly. What we need to do now is remove the three bolts that hold on this hub assembly. So um, the size that seems to fit the best is half inch. So I have a half inch deep socket, half inch drive. And again, there's gonna be three of these, one here, one here, one on the other side, which Again, I'm seeing some corrosion on here. Not really sure how this is gonna go. So righty tighty would be this way. Lefty loosey would be this way. I'm just gonna hit the back side of this with a little bit more blaster. And we'll hope for the best. If it starts to give me a lot of problems, you get the flashlight in here. It, it feels like it's loosening up, but I wanna make sure that I'm not ripping it. So what I'm watching, I'm watching down in here, I'm making sure that this is spinning as I'm turning it, which it's freeing up pretty easy. With a bolt like this, I like to just work it back and forth a little bit just to be sure that we're not gonna have any problems, but so far it doesn't look like this is gonna give me any problems, so I'm gonna switch now to my half inch drive. Shock it. Take this guy off the rest of the way. 
Oh yeah, we're gonna be fine with this one. All right, that one's broke loose. Not giving me any problems, knock on wood. So, I didn't damage the ABS slash wheel speed sensor with removing the old hub, but I am going to remove that prior to installing the new hub just to ensure that I don't possibly damage it. I am going to come inside this uh, assembly with a scotch brite pad and just knock down uh, any of the rust. I'm, I'm going to do that by hand. I'm not using anything mechanical, but I want to get all the corrosion and crud out of there. Now I want to take you outside and compare the old hub versus the new hub. So if I spin the the, uh, the old hub, yeah, that bearing's definitely on its way out. It's not as bad as what I was expecting, but it's definitely, it's a piece of junk compared to the new bearing. It's tight, it's quiet, it's <laughs> so much better than the old one. So I'm going to wash my hands, change my gloves, I'll clean that corrosion out of there, pop out that. ABS slash wheel speed sensor and we'll get to reassembly. So we are ready to start reassembly now. A few things. For one, I've greased up the splines, which you can love it or hate it. It's just something I do. I lubricated the inside of this with a little bit of ceramic brake parts lube to hopefully help this tub and bearing slide in a little bit easier, but also to prevent corrosion. I've also removed the wheel speed sensor, which I really should have done before I took the hub out. I think it's going to be just fine. So we can put our heat shield back in. Well, we're going to have to line that up as we install this new hub. But first things first, we got to try and get the splines lined up. Make sure I don't crush the wheel speed sensor now. All right. So the splines just slid into place. Um, I'm going to have to be able to spin this though, so that might mean I'm going to have to jack up the rear of the car and put the car in neutral. Alright, let me jack up the rear of the car and put it in neutral again. Now I can spin that, line it up. Which my plan here is to start everything. Make sure I can start everything by hand and then we'll move on to slowly and evenly tightening down these fasteners and I can tell you right now this is not going to be fun. So as you recall there's three bolts and you just got to start them from the back side and try and spin them, try and catch them on the inner part of this assembly which it's, it's really hard to do. I really recommend you using a half, half inch extension and you're just going to have to kind of feel your way through. All right, I have all three of these hub bolts started. So now I just gotta work on tightening them down evenly and then we'll move on to the axle nut. All right, you guys still with me? I hope so, all right. So, I reinstalled the wheel speed sensor and that required a 10 mil and that's back in place and that doesn't appear to be damaged in any way so that should be fine. Uh, now, I torqued these down. I don't know what the exact torque spec is, but I just gave them a good crank and I just bounced around, probably did each three times to ensure that they were firmly fastened. Now what we need to do, 
you remember a few moments ago, I, I rose up the rear of the car and had the car in neutral so that I could spin this into place. Well, I lowered the rear section of the car, put the car back in park so we could apply some torque to this axle nut. So now we need to refasten down this axle nut, which again, I'm sure there's a proper torque spec for this. There's a proper size socket, which is definitely in metric, but I don't have that. So we're just gonna make do with what we have. I think I'm gonna leave it right there. Now that we have that axle nut torqued down, what we can do is we can put on the new brake rotor. Now when you're putting the new brake rotor on, you remember we had that, what is this? Is this a T30? I believe it's a T30. Yeah, it's a T30. So we have this little T30 screw, or fastener, that needs to go right there. So there is a hole for that on your new rotor. So we gotta make sure that we line that up properly. Like so. And now with this little T30, I'm gonna take a little bit of brake parts lube, ceramic. I use this stuff like Never Sees. This has got that ceramic coating in there. I think it's a little bit better than Never Sees. Or as some people call it, Always Sees. But we're gonna start this by hand. Because we already have this cracked, I'm just gonna go at it with my impact gently. That's it. That's really just to hold this whole assembly on during assembly, or well, that's that little fastener is really just there to hold the brake disc in place while they're assembling these cars. All right, so now we can move back to our caliper bracket, and this is what we took off earlier. Now there's a few things going on in here. For one, we have the slide pins, which these should be free. And we're actually gonna lubricate these. This one's a little bit tight. That one's a little bit tight, so we gotta take that apart and see what's going on in there. And of course, we gotta lubricate it. But before we get to those, let's talk about these slide plates. So, I confirmed that I picked up the right uh, brake pad kit because these pads match the pads that I had in the front. Now from there, sometimes in this kit, there's different, there's like multiple size and different uh, replacement slides. So you just wanna be sure that it matches what you have because sometimes these kits will work on different makes and models. But anyway, the point I wanna make here is when you replace these slides, when you take these off, especially if you live in the salt belt, pay very close attention. Make sure there's no built up rust and corrosion in the back here. If there's built up rust and corrosion, make sure you remove that. Because what can happen if there's rust built up in the back here and you go to put this new slide back over that rust and corrosion, in essence what you've done is you've reduced the space, you've reduced the clearance in which this brake pad slides in and out on this bracket. And what that means is if you reduce that space, there is a good possibility that when the brake pads go to clamp down, because there's reduced space, reduced clearance in here, those brake pads very well may seize inside of this caliper bracket. So pay attention to any rust and corrosion in here. At the very least, take a wire brush and just knock down any surface rust Make sure that's clean and as close to factory spec as possible. From here, I'm going to take my new slide, which I think this is going to take a little bit of persuasion. I'll just tap this in. That's one side. That's the other side. Beautiful. Now let's try and pop out this slide pin. Let's see what's going on. Yep. See, we got some rust, corrosion, some goo in there. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this off with some brake parts cleaner. Then I'm gonna take some sandpaper and just grind this back down smooth and try and knock off some of that rust. 
Now this other pin, this other pin slides just fine. These just pop right out. It's a little bit dirty, so I'll clean this one up too. We'll apply some new silicone lubricant to it, and then we'll get to reinstalling this bracket. So here's the one pin that we had no problem sliding in and out. It's actually in really good condition. Now the other one, the other one, there's definitely a bit of corrosion on there. So I've actually put this in the chuck of my drill. I got some sandpaper and we'll see if we can work this down a little bit. Looks pretty good actually. I think we'll leave it there. Here's what I recommend lubricating these with. This is silicone paste, waterproof dielectric grease. Well, it's not just for dielectric applications, but this is what I like to use on my slide pins. So apply a nice coat to these slides, especially on the end. Slide this back in. And this is a lot better than what it was. It's lubricated, sliding in and out freely. That's what you want. Do the same thing on the other side. Beautiful. And this bracket is now ready to be reinstalled. Now, going in and out of the car and putting the car in neutral quite a few times, I've actually pressed the brake accidentally a few times. Well, I actually had to press the brake in order to shift the car into neutral. But what that's done is it's extended this brake uh, pad piston. So what I need to do, I need to compress this back down. And you could use a special tool for the front, but you don't have to. See, that's the brake piston. And all I'm using, I'm using an old brake pad, a big C-clamp, which this may be a very different story on the rear, but for the front, you can just tighten up your C-clamp and compress this back down. Now, if this doesn't compress in the front, then that very well could and likely will mean that you have a seized caliper and you're gonna need to replace the whole caliper, which I'm hoping uh, it's going to be fine on the other side, but we will get there when we get there. I don't think we have a closed caliper problem, but I just wanted to show you how to compress that back down with the C-clamp. Anyway, we are now ready to reinstall this caliper bracket, which this is going to go on here like so. And then, as you recall, these are 18s. Make sure these slides are good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go ahead and lubricate these slides very carefully with my ceramic brake parts lubricant. Some people do this, some people don't do this. I like to do this, it's your choice. Just make sure that you don't get this stuff on the rotor. But all you do, take a little bit of this, and where the pads actually slide, just put a little bit where the pads slide. Same thing on the other side. It just helps to reduce the friction of the pads sliding on these slides. So now, I know what you're saying, oh my god. The brake pads, they have this weird little line. I'm not really sure how to put these back in. Well, all you need to do is take a look at your old brake pads. Take a look at that side, take a look at the other side. You see that circle? Well, that circle is where the cylinder was pushing on. And that cylinder goes on the inside. So we know for a fact this brake pad that has this weird little 
doohickey coming off of it goes on the inside. And there's only one way that it could go on there. It goes on there like so. So this little doohickey should be up. Let me just take out my new pad. We'll match it. See how the doohickey's sticking up? So we'll take the new pad. We'll attempt to, we'll attempt to put it in here. It goes right in. And notice that that popped right in. It's nice and smooth. That's what you want. When you go to put these pads on, I actually probably should put a little bit right there, but when you go to put these pads on, if these pads are really tight, stop. There is a problem. You didn't clear out the rust behind this little slide, and you're gonna have problems. You're gonna wear out your brakes faster, and uh, your car is gonna be less efficient. You're gonna be burning through more fuel. Just again, make sure that you don't get this purple stuff on the pad itself. We'll go ahead and sneak this guy in here. See how easily that slid right in there? That's exactly what you want, so I'm really thrilled with how this is coming out. So now we can go ahead and take our brake caliper we can push this over slide pins and uh, hopefully we compress this enough. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to take our finer final bolts here. Which these are 14s. And these thread into uh, where those slide pins are. So the slide pins are very important. They allow for this piston to apply even force to either side of the pads. If you have bad slide pins, commonly what will happen is the paddles, uh, paddle compress more on one side of the rotor and you'll have uneven brake pad wear. And again, eventually you may have some seizing issues. So it's important to make sure that your slide pins slide. These I'm definitely not going to crank down nearly as much as I did with the, uh, oh, that's been a little bit. But yeah, these I'm not going to crank down nearly as much as I did with the brackets. Brackets support everything. This really just kind of holds the caliper in place to the bracket. I'm satisfied with that. Okay, check everything one more time. Those bolts are tightened. I tightened up the caliper bolts, slide bolts. We torqued down the axle nut. We reinstalled this T30, reinstalled the ABS sensor, and we bolted down the hub and we made sure that that was good and tight. So now, final thing to do is to reinstall the wheel which if you do for a tire rotation, now is the time, which I actually rotated these tires not that long ago. And uh, I'm gonna leave them the way they are. Now that the car is on the ground, I have my torque wrench and we're gonna torque down these lugs. According to my online search, each one of these lugs should have 105 foot-pounds to it, so I adjusted my torque wrench to 105 foot-pounds. And we're gonna do this in a star pattern. Okay, that is torqued down, and the final thing is to reinstall the hub cover. Right here, there's a little square cut out, so I'm gonna line that up. Beautiful. 
And that is how you replace front brakes and front wheel bearings on a GMC terrain. Now we need to do the rear brakes, which is going to be a heck of a lot easier than this, I think. And these brakes appear to be in very, very poor condition. All right, first things first, we need to remove the two caliper slide bolts, which there's one right here and one right here. So I have a 14 box wrench. It's righty tighty, lefty loosey, so I'm gonna whack this down. See how nice that is for loosening up bolts like that? Beautiful. And again, you don't want to hang this by the brake cable, but I'm going to be able to sneak this under the frame right here. And, uh, that'll be fine. It's supported. It should be okay. Now these brake pads, let's, let's get these out of here. And they're a little, a little bit tight. They're very tight. So with this, there may be some corrosion in here behind these slides, but these, these are tighter than they should be. Loosened up a little bit, but not what I was hoping to see. But it's fine because we're going to fix it. Oh, we are going to fix it. Still got. Still got a little bit of thickness on the pads. All right, next thing is next. We need to remove this caliper bracket. All right, caliper bracket bolts. If you trace down the slide pin, it's right beneath that. And I am using a 15 mil. I'm gonna use my hammer method. Oh wait, it's the wrong way. Don't wanna be doing that. One cracked. Okay, caliper bracket removed. So on the drum, we have yet again that lovely T30 fastener. We'll give her a couple taps. Put her on the socket. Off. Tappy tappy. And I think we got her. Hate me all you want, but it works. Knock on wood. Beautiful. I think we might get lucky here, actually. Getting some movement. Oh, yeah. All right. That's what I like to see. While we're in here, we can inspect the emergency brakes. They got, they got meat on there. Good chance they need to be adjusted, which that's something we could do. So the emergency brakes are just drum brakes. And they work by expanding and clamping on the inside of that drum. This is how trailer brakes actually work as well. But there's a little adjuster right there. What you can do, you can roll this in or roll this out to either expand where these normally sit or contract where these normally sit. So uh, we'll get the new drum and uh, we'll see how much slop there is in there. All right, so I, I made the emergency brakes just a little bit tighter. Nothing crazy. It just felt like it needed a little bit. And as I spin this, I can hear that the emergency brake is not uh, making contact with the drum. That's just my kind of method. I'm sure there's probably a better method on how to do that, but yeah. If, if when you press down on the emergency brake and you feel like there's a long travel 
then that is where you would make that adjustment. So again, we have that T30, that hole is lined up with the threads, ceramic brake parts, lube. I'll just tighten this back up. Not gonna go crazy. That's all it needs. That's it. Now from here, I need to service the brake caliper bracket, which I'm gonna do this off camera. You know, we just talked about how to do this. Good thing I'm seeing these slide pins do appear to be free, but I'm gonna go underneath uh, these metal slides and just look for any corrosion, which what's interesting is they're actually spaced off. You see that little space? So uh, something's going on here. Let me, let me go ahead and clean these up. Something I forgot to do in this video, there's a little rubber plug right here, and this is an inspection plug that is designed to be just removed so you can look inside the drum and inspect how thick the emergency brake pads are on the inside of this drum because with this car, there are drum brake, emergency brakes, so just make sure that you transfer that rubber plug over to your new rotor. So at this point, I'm just compressing the rear brake caliper, and uh, you can do the same thing with the C-clamp like you did in the front. <clears throat> and the reason we can compress this one, if I understand things correctly, is because the emergency brake for this car consists of the drum brakes, as where some modern cars, uh, they don't have drum brakes for emergency brakes. I believe this brake caliper doubles up as the emergency brake. I think it has to do with the way it kind of twists out of the, uh, the hydraulic cylinder, something like that. Don't quote me on that, but no matter. That makes our job easier. So, I have already serviced the caliper bracket. I did utilize the new metal slides. I lubricated these slide pins, which they are moving around just fine. So I am satisfied with this. So now we can go ahead and reinstall caliper bracket. Finally, we can lubricate these slides don't have to go crazy here. In fact, it's better to go light. If you go crazy, this stuff will end up on the rotor and you don't want this stuff on the rotors. That'd be a no-no. You'd find that you'd likely have trouble stopping the vehicle at times. All right, so once more we need to determine which pad goes where. So looking at these pads, again we have this little doohickey that sticks out. Notice the round circle. So this is gonna be where our back pad was. Make sure I have the right pad. I do have the right pad. So this guy's gonna go in the back. Let's hope that he just kinda pops right in, he or she, because uh, you can't be assuming these these genders anymore. Okay, that slid right on. Didn't have to push it hard or anything like that, which that's what you want. Let's try this one in the front. And it's, it's loose enough. I think a little bit of that has to do with the uh, slide not being hammered down all the way. You see there's a little space right there and it's, I don't know if I can touch it up. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right, I'm satisfied with that. Slides are sliding, slide pins. So now we can reinstall the caliper, get our caliper bolts or slide pin bolts, rather. Start them by hand. Always start them by hand. Check the 
check over everything one more time. Caliper bolts, tighten both those down. Slide bolts, tighten those down. We have our pads on. Our brake hose is in good condition. Looking for anything else wrong back here. Which everything else appears to be okay. All right, now we can reinstall the tire. All right, I'm exhausted. That took about five or six hours to film this, but that concludes this video on how to change out front brakes, rear brakes, as well as front hub and bearing assemblies on a GMC terrain. How much did everything cost? Well, it cost $300, $200 for the brakes and pads, and then $100 for the hub and bearing assemblies. I got two of them, one for each side, because it just makes sense to do them both while I'm taking the car apart to do the brakes anyway. Tools, you're going to need a whole bunch of tools. The most specialized tool that you're going to need if you're doing bearings is going to be that uh, metric sized axle socket, which I'm not 100% sure what size that is. Uh, what size did I use? I think I used inch and seven eighths and it got me by. Yeah, you, or excuse me, one and seven sixteenths. It's not ideal, but it worked. But that's that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll do the best to answer your question. Uh, one final note though, before you decide to pull the car out of the garage, make sure you pump that brake pedal because we decompressed those brake cylinders. So uh, when you go to hit the brakes for the first time, uh, you're not going to have brakes. So just make sure you pump the brakes really good. And that's it. I got to go shower and go to bed. Thanks for watching.